Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the spin card. Now this is a card that I ship with every electric eel wheel. There's two sides to it and lots of different features on both sides. So I'll sort of walk through what each of the different uh, parts of this does and how to use them. The first thing I'll mention is there's a ruler with inches on the top and centimeters on the bottom. And that can be used for many different things. Uh, one thing I'll mention right now is that a lot of times knitters will have to do a test swatch. And if you're not familiar with that, that's where uh, a pattern will ask you to, you know, knit a little square that's maybe 10 or 20 stitches wide, and then you'll measure that square on the ruler, and then using some simple ratio math, you can figure out how many stitches wide your pattern has to be in order to get it to a certain size. So that's one of the reasons I included the ruler. Um, I'll actually go over another use for it later, but I mean, they're just rulers, so you can use them for lots of different things. The next thing I'm going to mention are all of these pieces. That, so these are supposed to look like pieces of yarn. And the number above them is for their wraps per inch. This is five wraps per inch, this thick yarn. And this really thin yarn is 40 wraps per inch. And what that actually is referring to is if you take a piece of yarn and you loosely wrap it around this card a bunch of times, and sort of line it up like this. Um, so if this was going to be, you know, let's say it's um, 11 wraps per inch, uh, that would mean that you should get about 11 wraps in one inch on this ruler when you're sort of wrapping it in this direction. And now we'll check the actual wraps per inch. And uh, yeah, as I, as I thought, it's about uh, 11 wraps per inch. Um, on this guide. Now, thicker yarn, I mean, this is clearly too thick. Um, this five wraps per inch. Um, and then this is way too thin over here on this end. So I just sort of eyeball it and I say, oh yeah, this is 11. And when you're measuring this, if you pull it a lot, you can make it a lot thinner, but you don't want to do that. You basically just want to pull it enough to get it straight and then put it up to these guides. So those are the major features on this side of the card. Now, if I turn it over, there's really two main uses for this side of the card. Um, the first one is that there's this S and this Z, and that's referring to S twist and Z twist. And I have other videos that talk about S twist and Z twist and why you need them. So I'm not going to get into that here, but you often need to know if your yarn is S twisted or Z twisted, and this will help you do that. So if you look at the, the letter S, the middle portion is kind of going in this direction, like that. And then if you look at the middle portion of the Z, it's going in this direction. And that's what S-twist and Z-twist is actually referring to. It's the, the slant of the yarn. So if I put up this yarn on this Z-twist, you can see that it's slanted in this direction. And that's not... Z twist, so I move it over here and put it in front of the S, and now it's slanted in the same direction as the S. So this is S twist. And even if you flip over the yarn and measure it from the other direction, it's still going to have the same slant. So again, it's in this direction. So it's it's S twist yarn, and that's um, determined by the direction your spinning wheel is going when you spin the yarn. Uh, and then these angles here help you determine uh, the amount of, of twist your yarn actually has. So again, you want to pull it just enough to get it straight, and then you line it up with whatever one of these lines makes sense. So this looks like it's, you know, maybe 40 degree uh, yarn. And there's not an a, a, a number of degrees in your yarn that actually um, is correct. You can have loosely spun yarn that's you know, 10 or 20 degrees, and that's fine. And you can have tightly spun yarn that's 60 degrees, and that's fine. The thing you generally want to check, especially as a, a person who's learning to spin, is if your yarn is consistent. Like, it's easier to knit with yarn that's, you know, consistently at the same angle all the way through it. So you'll, you'll test different pieces of your yarn and try to determine, you know, is it all between 30 and 40 degrees? Or am I seeing that, you know, it varies a huge amount, like, you know, from 
50 degrees to 20 degrees would be a lot of variance in yarn. And then that could be something that you could work to improve your consistency on and then, you know, test future yarns. Um, or maybe you're going for inconsistent yarn, in which case you, you probably don't want to use this kind of a guide. Here's another piece of yarn. We'll just look at this one. So this is more loosely spun. And you can see it's maybe 20 to 30 degrees. So neither one of these is right or wrong. It's just um, that they're, they're spun differently. So that pretty much covers the different uses of this spin card. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.